Um, well, the question was, do things happen for a reason, right? Right. Like, yeah. for example, like, is it predetermined that our internet would suck this morning while we're trying to do this video? <laughs> now that's meta. Um, you know, when I think of that question, what immediately strikes me is that's ultimately a question about meaning. Is there any meaning in life or is it all random? Mm -hmm. Right? Is it just happenstance? Is it totally random? There's no overarching uh, reason that anything happens. It just somehow happens because two, two people or two things happen this or two circumstances even. And, and they create through sort of the random of life something something new and that that's a little sad to me that that uh -huh. makes me kind of uh that that's like really disappointing in fact um um it's really disappointing and it seems counterintuitive to my experience uh because uh we live in this i mean i've, I've been out in vermont and, and i've been stargazing every night and we just live in this incredible universe where everything kind of makes sense. You know, we have, the earth happens to exist at the exact right distance from the sun to support life. Um, I mean, even that in, its, in and of itself is a miracle. I know and just talk about um, like physical uh, constants, like, like these, these numbers that if it was even a few decimal points off, you know, it would have totally thrown off the physics of everything and made it all incomprehensible and probably made it such that life wouldn't exist. Um, at least the one we know it. And it, there, mm -hmm. just, there are so many things. So, yeah, so I guess there's kind of like a spectrum of possibilities. One is like, um, yeah, everything is random and chaos and has no meaning. And, uh, and, you know, things are just kind of bumping along in the universe. And then the other one is like, I guess the other side of the spectrum is like every single thing, every moment, every decision, every blink of an eye, every word is filled with like deep meaning and purpose. And there's like, you know, someone watching over everything, right? So that's kind of one way to see it is like, there's these kind of two opposing views of the universe. Mm. Somehow I'm comfortable, more comfortable with the latter. Like, it's okay <laughs> if, if, you know, if there is meaning and if there's meaning in every single thing, that's better than there being no meaning at all. And we just sort of being these lost particles that somehow figured out how to think and came to think about their own existence um, <laughs> that rather than like it was all meant to be this way you know i'm much more comfortable with that is that a scary thought do you think to some people i think i think uh i think all of us have our own mental packages and i think reality as we perceive it is more or less comfortable to each of us depending on what you know mm -hmm. some people are totally atheistic and they're like why would i want anyone else to be in control of my destiny like i am right. only in this moment and i'm gonna just cease to exist at the end of my life yeah. um you know purpose do you think they really think much about that though i mean i feel like the whole trick to that is to not think about it right i mean that's a good point like how do you survive through life if like if 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 you know nothing has any meaning um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I question is like, if nothing has, if nothing has any purpose or meaning behind it, mm -hmm. then why be good to anyone? Exactly. Morality loses all sense and purpose and, you know, just be just a, whatever you know, selfish thing you want. That world. Yeah. Yeah. It's then, then it, truly we end up with survival of the fittest in the worst sense. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, and then there's, and then there's this question about purpose, um, layers of purpose in the sense of like, there's something, things that have meaning to the people around you. And then there's things that have meaning like on a cosmic level to like the demigods, 
like, mm -hmm. you know, the higher powers that exist in the material world. Mm -hmm. And then there's the question of what do things mean for the soul in relationship to Krishna, mm -hmm. you know, because there's a lot of energies. It's not just two things coming together. There's a lot of energies coming together, you know? So mm -hmm. I, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is depends on how open we are to try and understand what it means. Cause like on one level you can say purpose or, you know, you know, purpose means karma you learn from you do something and something bad happens to you so like it's an action reaction type of thing you know mm -hmm. but on a high on the highest level you know vaishnavas kind of believe that karma is just like gravity it's just a law of material nature ultimately that doesn't yeah. really have anything to do with your relationship with krishna in the mm -hmm. highest sense, you know right you're not in a relationship with krishna I mean, when you are, then it's, I guess, no longer karma. And right. Everything that happens to you is like Krishna directly interfacing right. with your life. Right. So what's interesting to me about that question is what changes for someone when they become like that, where everything is about their relationship with Krishna versus it seems like they could be in the same circumstance, but experiencing everything instead of Krishna's desire, they experience it as karma. I know like from a technical theological perspective, it's sort of a move from Mahashakti to the Antaranga Shakti. So it's moving from Krishna's external energy ruling your life to Krishna's internal energy kind of orchestrating your life. Right, but what's fascinating is what is the change that happens? And really the only change that happens is the surrendering of the jiva moves to a point where it's... Yes. So, so, so the point is, it's kind of up to us to decide whether our life is filled with purpose of just like suffering and karma and learning from our mistakes, or whether it's totally like dancing with Krishna in ecstasy. Right. So, and it also sounds like the only real choice we have in that is, you know, to choose to love Krishna or to choose not to, or to turn towards Krishna or to turn away from Krishna. And that seems to be the only like truly meaningful choice we make and everything from there is like, you know, a bunch of dominoes going uh, one after the other. <laughs> It's interesting because, because you know, Bhagavad Gita says Krishna is the doer. Krishna is the spirit soul creating the, any consciousness or movement in the body. Krishna is the right. field of action. Right. Anything that happens is like happening on Krishna. It's Krishna doing the things. Krishna is the two people involved in the things. Like everything is just Krishna. So what actually are we doing at all of, of anything? And it right. turns out, like you're saying, it comes down to our most sincere desire. If our most sincere desire is to pull away from Krishna, mm -hmm. then we get pulled into the material energy, you know? And if our most sincere desire is to be pulled toward Krishna, we get pulled into Krishna's energy. Right. Yeah, no, that, that, that really is wonderful. It's, it's hopeful, it's meaningful. Um, and just like everything else is meaningful in this world, in so many ways, you know, the laws of physics and the ways in which molecules and atoms combine to create larger things. And it, it all has rules and, and purpose. And, and we're all searching for that, I think. That's why science is such a sort of serious endeavor, because we are searching for meaning and we find it. And if we find it in that aspect of our lives, why not in every aspect of our lives? There are, there are seemingly two schools of scientists. One school that says that the more we learn about the natural universe, the more we find purpose and connection with God. And right. there's another school of scientists that say, the more we learn, we realize that actually we don't need, we don't need God. Yeah. So I, I do think that um, there is a way to pursue the knowledge and gaining of knowledge and you know material wisdom that brings you closer to krishna you know i, I yeah, agree absolutely I, I think a part of the, the the school of people who really sort of reject god in in need of or in in place of science uh, the part of that is because their relationship to god to start with was transactional you know they approach mm -hmm. god for certain things they need but when they realize gimme, gimme, gimme. that from themselves then then why do you need god anymore but I think when you have that relationship of love, then changes the, the dynamic and the thinking there a little. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It, it looks like Krishna decided we were talking some sense and our connection's gotten better. <laughs> I guess when we get closer to Krishna, our connections to each other get better also. <laughs> oh, jai, jai, jai. <laughs> Do you have any final thoughts on this, Prabhu? Is there a meaning? I think there's also just one other factor, which is that as devotees, 
our job is to find those connections and and find meaning for others and help others to find the meaning you know to move beyond uh just the experience of what's going on in our lives to to, to the understanding of what's going on in our lives right, right. yeah i love that i i really love that because we see the meaning and people want meaning and if we can share that with them we'll be really you know endearing ourselves to them and to krishna that's the magic and to krishna and to krishna that's the magic the magic krishna sees the soul is there in the material world suffering through all these things and yet he's going out of his or her way to connect someone else with me and krishna. oh great that is sick. yeah one who uh, teaches others or tells others about this conversation that we've had krishna says in the gita you know that one is most dear to me yeah, or that, you know, Tavakatamritam Tapta Jivanam, mm -hmm. you know, that Gopi Gita verse where Krishna talks mm -hmm. about how they're always telling everyone about Krishna. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. All righty. Well, thanks Alrighty. for the time. And, and, Thank uh, you for being And now, now I feel confident that there, there is meaning <laughs> in this world and in this life. Uh, and it's through these interactions that we find it, right? To Sangha. Yeah. Sangha, even in the spiritual world, it's all about Sangha. Exactly. Yeah. Well, this is great. Thank you for watching so, us this evening. You. All right.